Hello, my name is Jack Dulles, Director of Training here at Tulsa Welding School. And today, I'd like to bring you more about talking about the MIG process. And I'd like to go over kind of troubleshooting, you know. I know there's times, I know there's guys or ladies out there, you kind of do-it-yourselfers, you know, they're around the house and you want, to, you want to be able to fix your motorcycle or you want to fix your lawnmower. Or maybe you got a car part that's broke off on the, in the out back or something. You know, those types of people where I want to try to help you be able to set up your MIG machine and troubleshoot your MIG machines where if you're having issues with it, maybe I can help you out with that today and help you uh, with being able to set up your machine and troubleshoot. So, let's go over the machine. You got to have a power source. We have our power source right here. This is our welding machine. And anytime you have a, when you're doing the MIG process, you got to have a wire feeder system. So this is our wire feeder system and we'll go over it in just a second. But basically, you got to have a power source, you got to have your wire feeder, and with, when you're running with, uh, with, the MIG, with the MIG process, not all the time, but 90% of the time, you're going to run off of a shielding gas as well. So we got our shielding gas. So these are the key components that you got to have. You got to have machine, wire feeder, gas, and obviously your metal, your spool of wire. So we'll go through this and see how to set it up. First of all, you're going to take your ground, your, work, your ground lead that you're going to hook to your part, and that's always going to go in your negative as far as the MIG process goes. And then when you're going to put your hook, your positive, your work lead, into the back of the machine, so then it will run, your wire will run through your welding gun and come out of your welding gun like so. And we'll go over this operation. I just want to show you there's multiple machines. This is just one that we have here at school. Here's another one. It's called an Active 8. Okay. And this is a handheld suitcase. Basically, it's the exact same thing. You know, you'd hook your, you hook your, uh, this up to your machine, then you run your gas into the back, and this basically pops open, and you can put your wire inside. You'll see a lot of these used at shipyards and places like that, but uh, they call these suitcases welders. I just want to show you, there's multiple different setups. This is just one that Lincoln has, Miller has them, lots of people have them, uh, but various different machines, but they're all basically set up the same way and they basically all run the same way, all right? So let's go over this. <clears throat> On this machine here, we've already got some pre-settings in there. There's th these buttons do a lot of different things, but these are pre-set buttons. So I've already got my, my steel in there. I've got what I want to set it on. Got it on 60 volts and, you know, uh, about 100 wires, or 100 on the volts. So let's talk about this. Let's get in here to actually the guts. How does this work? So you take this piece off. So we're going to actually show you how to put together the MIG machine and the wheels. So what happens is this roll, this is a 33 pound roll of MIG wire. They come various sizes. They come from one pound to, to a whole drum of just rolls of wire out of 55 gallon drum. So there's lots of ways this rolls come. But here at our school, this is what we use, 33 pound spool. So when you put this on, you want to make sure it's feeding off the bottom, okay? Not off the top, and I'll explain. So when you put it on, you slide it up on like so. Okay, there's actually a little piece inside, if you can see it right here. You put it onto your spindle, and that's, oh, and I got fast hands too. And so it locks in. And then once you get it up on there, you got a little locking key. There's various locking keys. Basically, it slides on like so, and that holds your wheel in place. Or that, you don't want that to fall off on you. So, we're going to take our wire. And like I said, you want to make sure that it feeds off the bottom. Why is that, Jack? Well, because if it's coming off the top, it's going to be in a bind right here. Whenever it's feeding in, it's going to be in a bind, right? And you don't want that. You want it nice and smooth, clockwise, coming off the bottom. And we're going to feed it in. And so we've got some little guides. You got, you got these wheels here, okay? They come, in, they come in lots of sizes. But the size that you're, we're using is 035. And so I want to make sure that my wheels that are on here have got the groove for 035 wire so it can go on through. And that basically these guided wheels drive the wire through and into the wire, into the gun, and then which comes out the nozzle so where we can weld with it. So we're going to push our wire on through. We're going to get it into these wheels, into this guide. Make sure it's where it's supposed to be. Once we get it where it's, where it's nice and it's all right, everything's tight in there like so. We're going to come back and put our basically our lock on, if you will. And these come in various ways as well. This is just Lincoln's brand. But it goes on and screws on like so.
Make sure it's on there nice and neat. Then we're gonna close up our lid. Lock this back down real quick. Okay, so once we've done all that, we've got our machine on, got our stuff. So we're basically gonna pull our trigger here. You can see our wire, our roll is spinning and it's gonna guide our wire down through and make it come out of our gun here. Okay, so let's see if we can't uh, speed the process up just a little bit. It's got a cold roll. Some machines got cold roll on them. And that helps just guide the machine, the wire on through a little bit faster. You keep holding it down until your wire comes out of your nozzle, out of your diffuser. Oh, see, and there it comes. And once it comes out like so, you want to make sure it runs out. You also don't want to have your tip on while you're doing it. Always have your tip off because sometimes it'll get hung up in there. So you don't have your tip on. Now we're going to put our tip on, screw this down, like so. Then you got your nozzle to protect your tip, okay? And this goes on like so. Some slide on, some have threads. This is a thread on one. They come in various ways for, di for different brands, but they all pretty much work the same way. So get it in there, cut off the little excess wire that we don't need. And now we've got our MIG set up, we've ran through the machine, now we've got it into our gun, and basically we're ready to weld at this point. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to run you a couple of welds, show you the good welds, and then we're going to go in and show you some bad welds. And as you, we're go, I'll walk you through them. When you see the gun spitting and sputtering and carrying on, I'll tell you that you got too much wire and I'll show you how to adjust it. And then we'll go on with not enough wire and having it burn back into the nozzle. Then we'll fix that and we'll troubleshoot that as well. So let's get right into the weld and let's show you some welding. Okay, so now we're actually going to go in and show you a nice MIG weld. There's lots of ways of going about making a pattern. You know, a lot of people will give you the C shape. There will be a step technique. I'm actually going to run you like a cursive E. That's going to be my pattern. Uh, but it's really what you like to do. So we're going to run you a good pass in here and we're going to show you that. Listen for the sound of it. Hear that nice little buzzing sound going. And then after that, we'll get into some uh, troubleshooting. We'll show you some kind of the don't do's and how to fix them. So let's get right into the welding. Everybody ready? Okay, and we got a nice little clean weld in here. I hope you can see that. And that's all, like I say, with the cursive E pattern. There's many ways of doing about it. It's really just about watching your puddle, making sure you got a nice smooth puddle going, making sure it's filling up top bottom when you're making that little fillet pass. So we're gonna get into actually showing you the don'ts. If the wire is popping, if you got it jabbing and kicking back and kicking back, that means you have too much wire coming out. And I'm gonna show you an example of what that actually looks like. Okay, so this is going to be an example of too much wire coming out. You're going to see the wire jabbing and popping and kicking back. And that's going to let you know that there's too much wire. You need to turn your wire speed down. You can see the popping and sporadicness of the weld. How it's popping all over the place. It's letting you know it's entirely too much wire coming out. You can see the sporadicness of it and popping and kicking. Too much wire. Okay, if you're making wells like that, that's bad. That's not what we're looking for. So if you see that going on, turn your wire speed down. So let's turn it down. Now I'm going to show you not having enough wire. Okay, so now we're gonna look, you're going to look at it and it's going to see the wire is not actually making it to the plate. It's burning back up into our tip of our MIG gun, which is a bad thing because it's going to end up messing up your MIG gun and your tips. So here's another example of what not to do. When you have the wire burning back into your tip, it's going to tell you to turn your wire speed up.
And that was me trying my best to try to make it actually work. So I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit more so you can see the really good of it. It's probably gonna burn back into our nozzles, so I want you to be able to see it here. Here we go. You can see how it's burning. It's not even getting to the plate. It's starting to melt before I even get there. This is a clear sign of not enough wire. Okay, so that was a really bad weld. Those are the types of welds that you don't want to do. So let's go back and just touch on it again. If your wire is jabbing and kicking, then you have too much wire. If the wire is not hitting to the plate and it's burning back into the, your tip, then you don't have enough wire coming out. So let's go back to show you <clears throat> and actually a good weld. We're going to get you to be able to see a really nice clean weld and then uh, we'll finish it up here. Ready? Okay, and like I say, that's more of what I choose to run. I would like to run like a cursive E, but it's really up to you. It's entirely your choice of what your pattern wants to be. Once again, it's more about watching the puddle, okay? Reading the puddle, seeing what is going on. But here was a nice little tutorial about MIG weld, and we went over troubleshooting, went over kind of the, if you see this happening, change your wire speed. We went over the setup of actually the MIG setup. I've shown you how to feed the wire system and, and put all the wire in properly. We've went over all those kind of different things. So it's just a little tutorial on uh, MIG and flux core, or on MIG, excuse me, not flux core. And um, I hope you enjoy it. If you've got questions or concerns, please reach out to Tulsa Welding School. We'll be glad to help you and answer your questions. Thank you very much.